In this episode of Falmouth in Focus, we'll visit the Falmouth Farmers Market to see how they've adapted during this period of social distancing. Learn about how this year's New Balance Falmouth Road Race at Home event will continue to support local charities and celebrate the Falmouth High School Class of 2020. All this and much more on this edition of Falmouth in Focus. Hello and welcome to Falmouth in Focus, FCTV's current affairs program. I'm your host, Michael Kasparian. It's been five months since the spread of the COVID-19 virus has disrupted all aspects of our life in Falmouth and around the world. As businesses transition through the reopening period and more summer visitors migrate to vacation spots like Falmouth, it's important that we all follow guidance from our local Board of Health to help prevent further spread of the virus. With two recent cluster events causing Falmouth's numbers of confirmed cases to increase significantly compared to previous weeks, Falmouth's health agent, Scott McGann, reminds us to follow social distancing and masking guidelines. Tune in to his weekly coronavirus updates each Friday on FCTV Channel 13, our Facebook page, and FCTV.org. The challenge of maintaining social distancing between shoppers and vendors has not escaped the organizers of the weekly Falmouth Farmers Market at Marine Park. FCTV visited the market and checked in with manager Jennifer Christian. So the Farmers Market is every Thursday from end of May to mid-October and it's from noon to five this year. A few COVID things is that we are not allowing dogs in the market area this year, unfortunately, and then masks are required and we are a one-way directional market. So you come in one side and you just start the rotary and keep on that traffic flow. We didn't lose too many vendors to COVID. Our hope and goal would be to have more Falmouth-grown products. We do our very best. There's only so many farms here in Falmouth, um, and we look to highlight those as much as humanly possible. Um, and because we want more farmers to be able to exist in town and if like we can give them a place to sell and be then that's that's our job and to gain people access to local food that would be difficult otherwise. Knowing that these farmers are taking the money that they're making here and they're reinvesting it into their farms and making it bigger or they're hiring somebody because they've gotten big enough to hire so you can create jobs, you can keep the farms active and alive and if we don't support local food the only thing we're, all the options we're going to have are less nutrient dense traveled packed unripe like the grocery store offers food but you'll never get food fresher than here this food is picked the day of and then driven by the person that picked it to the market and handed to you and so i just think i want to make people aware of how much impact that they can have in their local economy for other locals to like make this place permanent and and like thriving local food system that every community needs and if we don't actively support it it will not exist and i think there's a lot of things in the world that if we don't support it they won't exist so i think a lot of people are reassessing how they feel about their health they're reassessing how they feel about their community and I think the farmer's market is a great place to start change in your life, especially if you're looking for health, mental health, like feeling good about the things you're doing in the world. Shopping local is one of the best ways to support our businesses. So don't forget the farmer's market every Thursday, noon to 5 p.m. through October 8th. Thanks to our interns, Ellen and Emily, for that story. It's time now for three things from Town Hall. FCTV's condensed version of the takeaways from recent municipal meetings. Selections are chosen based on community impact. The Falmouth Select Board held their regular meeting with an update and discussion regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. The board invited members of the school department to talk about the high school graduation cancellation and how that decision came about. 
Beach Department staff also attended this discussion to answer questions and explain the process that was followed regarding several beach lifeguards testing positive for COVID-19 in the days prior. We really wanted to make sure that we had um, Dr. Dewar and um, Chairwoman Welsh to come in and talk about um, what we know is an incredibly difficult decision. We know plans have been in the works for months to try and have graduation for seniors. And there's probably nothing more heartbreaking um, for, you know, to, to have before you as a decision to have to cancel that in the way that um, it took place. Similar to what Dr. Dewar and Chairwoman Weld were saying, I do want to um, publicly and in front of the board thank the staff for their overall response to this sudden change. Um, very much the board has looked like August 27th instead of July 27th. Um, for end of season, and those that are um, showing up to do their job, um, making responsible choices, um, being communicative with staff, again, without the verbal anecdotal reporting, we couldn't have jumped on this. Water Superintendent Stephen Rafferty was invited to this meeting to discuss his concerns over water usage in town. Mr. Rafferty asked the board to declare a state of water supply conservation, specifically for automatic sprinkler systems. Mr. Rafferty explained that the water usage in Falmouth is up 20% from this point last year, and that the water supply, according to the Department of Environmental Protection, must be maintained at a safe and adequate supply for all consumers. Um, I'm before you tonight uh, to ask you, per section 223-4 of the Falmouth Town Code for a declaration of state of water supply conservation. And I'm specifically asking you uh, to prohibit the use of automatic sprinkler systems, which is one of several items that can be imposed if there is a declaration of state water supply conservation. And there's a key phrase in here inside our regulations, our bylaws, it says the conservation measure is appropriate to ensure the safe and adequate supply of water to all consumers. And fundamentally, the DEP's regulations say that if you run a water system, you have to maintain a safe and adequate supply of water to all consumers. The Select Board invited Town Council Frank Duffy for a discussion and update from the EDIC regarding Phase 2 of the EDIC solar project. The board voted unanimously for the on-bill credit agreement, which is just one part of the overall project. Town Council then walked the board through the discussion with EDIC and Town Council had regarding the intergovernmental agreement. Um, now, the um, let me just digress a second and talk about the, the on-bill, um, the solar on-bill credit agreement. There's really no dispute about that. I have been dealing directly with um, Citizens Energy. Um, I presented uh, through Mr. Suso a copy of that agreement. Um, it's ready to go. You can vote it. You already did. Actually, you voted to uh, authorize the town manager to uh, to sign the um, solar on bill credit agreement, whereby 50% of the bill credit generated by the solar at the phase two project will be sold to the town at a 20% discount. To see the meetings in their entirety, Check out Government Channel 15's program schedule at fctv.org. It's now time for this month's calendar segment. On August 12th at 4 p.m., Falmouth Museums on the Green will host its first ever virtual poetry fest. The Catherine Lee Bates Poetry Reading will celebrate everyone, six-year-olds to seniors, who submitted original, unpublished poems. Go to museumsonthegreen.org for more information. There's still time to register for the annual Falmouth Walk, which will take place virtually on or around August 15th. Participants are invited to walk five kilometers around their neighborhood to help support 13 local charities. Go to falmouthwalk.org for registration information. On August 29th, join the Alzheimer's Family Support Center for their third annual free conference with specialist Tipa Snow. This day-long virtual event We'll cover topics specific to the navigation of Alzheimer's and dementia-related diseases during the COVID-19 pandemic in six hour-long sessions. Go to alzheimerscapecod.org for more information. And finally, 
Don't forget to join us on Thursday, August 27th for the next virtual installment of our open mic series, Poetic License, which turns one year old this month. Sign up for another night of poetry and prose, stories and songs, with entertainment provided by you and your friends and neighbors. Pre-register by Wednesday, August 26th to receive your Zoom login information. Check out fctv.org for more information. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll learn how this year's at-home edition of the New Balance Falmouth Road Race is continuing to help support charitable organizations. Stay with us. Falmouth Community Television is an essential public service. During this challenging time, we've been working hard to keep you informed. By bringing you the latest information you've come to expect. In our town and in the world around us. So check out our website or our Facebook page. Or public channel 13, educational channel 14, or our government channel 15. For video updates from our local and state officials. Local town meetings. And special member and staff programming. And we want to hear from you, too. Send us your short video for our series, Sharing Your Stories. Or participate in Community Conversation Series online. So stay healthy, stay safe, stay strong, and stay engaged with FCTV. Because FCTV cares. FCTV cares. Because FCTV cares about you. Welcome back. The 48th running of the iconic New Balance Falmouth Road Race will be celebrated worldwide as a virtual event beginning August 15th on the birthday of late founder Tommy Leonard and concluding on August 29th. In this year's at-home edition, runners or walkers will cover seven miles in their own neighborhoods anytime during that period. Let's take a look at how this event will continue to help raise funds for local charities like Compassionate Care ALS. Hi, I'm Jennifer Edwards, General Manager for the New Balance Falmouth Road Race. And I'm here today at the iconic Nobska Lighthouse down in Woods Hole just after mile one on the course. This year, due to the pandemic, we transitioned the event to the 48th running of the New Balance Falmouth Road Race at home edition. And we welcome over 9,000 runners and walkers to complete seven miles on a course of their choice in their neighborhood. Of these 9,000 runners, we have 1,500 people that are running to raise money for our local nonprofits. Our Numbers for Nonprofits program has been in existence for over 20 years. Last year alone, we helped to raise $5.1 million for Massachusetts based nonprofits. And this year, we have 100 Massachusetts based nonprofits participating in our Numbers for Nonprofits program. And Falmouth Road Race Inc has donated $3.69 million to our local community since 2012. You can visit www.falmouthroadrace.com to learn more about these fantastic charity partners and what they do to give back to their communities. Hi, my name is Christine Copley and I work for Compassionate Care ALS and we're a nonprofit here in Falmouth and what we do is we support families affected by ALS. We're sitting here today at our retreat center which just opened up last year and it's a converted inn that's really meant for people with ALS and their families to come and to escape and to um, go on vacation, enjoy um, all of Cape Cod and it's, it's also an education center for gatherings for people to, to have um, you know, seminars. The majority of the funding for, for CCLS is, is through individual donations. Uh, people understand the work that we do and um, are, are often coming to us afterwards and, and thanking us for, for what we've provided during a very trying and difficult time in someone's life. Uh, we do a little bit of grant work and then we do fundraisers on our own. Uh, the number one fundraiser has always been the Falmouth Road Race. We have about 600 families that we're working with right now. About 90% of them are here in New England. In Falmouth, we have mm, maybe eight or nine people that we're taking care of. Um, so the, the need is great because this is a disease with no cure um, and everyone's situation is a little bit different in how this disease unfolds. And so um, 
we're here to help them. I've been running the Falmouth Road Race now for 24 years. About five years ago I made the, the switch to actually fundraising for CCLS and it's the only, the only time I ever ask other people for money. I always liken the whole um, ALS experience with running because people with ALS um, often have compromised respiratory systems. So when I'm running, I'm breathing hard. And, um, and so, I, you know, there's this, this nice little, you know, I'm running for people who can't. And, and so they're, I'm honoring them when I'm running for them. So um, last year, Compassionate Care ALS had 100 runners that raised about $250,000. Um, we are always looking for runners that want to support us, and if you go to Compassionate Care's ALS website, ccals.org, there's plenty of information on, on how to become a runner, how to join the team, um, or just, you know, it, the ability to, to sponsor a runner and, and uh, do a donation. Visit FalmouthRoadRace.com for more information about the numbers for nonprofit program. Thanks to Andrew Richards for that story. Falmouth Community Television is committed to helping support our local businesses as they transition during the changing phases of reopening during the coronavirus pandemic. FCTV spoke to restaurant owner Kate Ricard about the challenges she's faced during this reopening period. Hi, my name is Kate Ricard. I'm the owner of Bear and Boots Burger Bar at 285 Main Street in beautiful downtown Falmouth, Massachusetts. At the Burger Bar, we serve grass-fed burgers that are cooked through on a griddle. We have a selection of different types of toppings you could put on them. We have different types of milkshakes. We have big, fat hot dogs um, that we cut open and put different toppings on. We have truffle fries and fries and a full bar that we offer in our backdoor patio. We were closed for a full year and we had opened right the weekend of the bomb cyclone. Uh, that was our opening weekend, which caused power outages throughout and shorted out all our refrigeration on opening day. So that was our first struggle, was opening for the first time then. Then uh, we were open for a couple of weeks and then COVID hit, so we closed right away. Um, and then we started doing takeout and everybody was really excited to get back. As things went on, we were able to have outdoor seating um, and then eventually serve alcohol out here. And when you're in the hospitality industry, you get used to serving people and seeing that life and that energy that's at your tables and that's kind of what propels you to do the work that you do. So going through COVID and not having that, seeing the dining room empty was really eerie, but then seeing it full again and people coming out and being kind has really been a gift. We definitely have seen a drop in alcohol sales because you can't see our bar. Um, and you may not know that we have this beautiful patio out back and we can bring the drinks to you. And we'd love to have you come and sit outside under the stars with us. So when I opened b, b Burger Bar, my concept was I wanted to use it as a platform um, to work with teenagers and have an influence in my community. I really wanted to build confidence in them and I thought the best way to do that would be to show them how successful they can be, how they can have an impact on their community. Um, and by giving them responsibility and holding them accountable for their jobs, I've been able to do that. And it's really, really cool when you see a kid that comes in for their first job and they're nervous and they don't know how to talk to anybody and then maybe three or four weeks into it, they've, they're comfortable, they've blossomed. It's really cool to watch. So another way that I found to utilize this platform to outreach to the community is to form a nonprofit organization. Uh, mine is called b, &B Communities. Uh, we're planning on focusing on art with teenagers, but then another thing that we like to do is spotlight. So we have a board and we select local leaders in our community that are making everyday changes in our lives that we don't really know about. And then we ask them if there's a charity that they are, um, care about that we could donate to. And the way that we donate that is we come up with a menu item with them and then all the profits of that menu item go to the charity of their choice. It gives 
us an opportunity to say, hey, look at these people that are right here. This is something that they care about. And here's a way that you can show them that you care about it just by having a burger and a milkshake. So it's, it's kind of a cool way, again, that I can use the platform to give back and try and be a role model. Stay tuned to FCTV and Falmouth in Focus in the months ahead for more stories about Falmouth's businesses and how they are adapting to the ever-changing restrictions due to COVID-19. Thanks to Andrew Richards for that story. Heritage Museums and Gardens in Sandwich is getting ready for their big pollinator festival. And FCTV checked in with President and CEO Ann Scott Putney to learn more. So Heritage is open every day. Um, Monday through Sunday. Um, we open at 10 o'clock until 5 o'clock every day. Um, and this summer, we um, really to accommodate people's um, after hours, we're open every Thursday night until 8 p.m. And each Thursday night has a special theme. Uh, we have music, we have the cafe open, we have special challenges for families, and each one has a diff different theme that involves scavenger hunts and other things that families can enjoy together. COVID-19 has been a challenge for all of us, uh, but this season we are very, very fortunate that we have 100 acre acres of outdoor spaces. And so we were actually able to open our gardens early um, in phase, well, at the beginning of phase one on May 30th, which was a huge gift to our community. Now our museums are open, um, but we are extremely compliant with all of the <laughs> mandates from our state, um, masks are required for all of our visitors, um, and most people are wearing them outside, which we require unless you, uh, if you can't maintain six feet of distance. We have hand sanitizers everywhere, and we have, uh, our indoor spaces are very clearly marked with the right pathways through the museum, and also um, the numbers of people that are able to be in any building at, at one time. The Pollinator Festival is new this year. We know that people love festivals, and we love to celebrate the plants and environments that make Cape Cod so special. So the Pollinator Festival is starting on August 8th. It goes through the 18th and it celebrates the pollinators that you find here at Heritage and on Cape Cod. Um, we have an exhibit of what's really a pollinator garden, uh, lots of flowers and plants that have been planted that attract pollinators. And right here you can see an exhibit of 21 different pollinators that you'll find here at Heritage and they're all made out of Lego bricks. And this is just one of the several different places where we have these large pollinators made out of Legos that uh, celebrate the pollinators that you find here at Heritage and also tell you a little bit about their story. We have a fabulous new exhibit called um, Let's Play. And it's actually intended for kids of all ages um, because no matter what age we are, we probably have a favorite toy or game that we played when we were young. And this particular exhibit is based on the toys and games that were made specifically here in New England. And so this exhibit is a exploration of the history and the backstories of how many of these toys got started. Some of them are quite surprising. Um, and the ingenious and sometimes sort of highly creative people are always highly creative people um, behind these games that we that are part of our shared culture. There are many different types of collections at Heritage. Uh, one of the favorite collections we have is our car collection. And the exhibit is called uh, From Carriage 1898 to Classic, the classic cars we remember, how automobiles transformed our culture. And this exhibit is arranged chronologically with lots of interesting history and backstories so you can understand how with the introduction each decade of new innova of innovations in car making, it affected our culture. Heritage is now 50 years old and one of the reasons that it's endured is that Heritage is a place where families come as part of their summer tradition. And people come back year after year after year. And this year in particular, I think families are looking for things that they can do together, that where they feel safe, where they feel comfortable. And we really are that special place where people can enjoy this summer together. Um, for more information, visit heritagemuseumsandgardens.org. Thanks to our interns, Ellen and Emily, for that story. We're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll check in with College Light Opera Company. Stay with us. Welcome back. 
The College Light Opera Company's typical performance season at Highfield Theater has been put on hold this summer because of the COVID-19 virus. So the students, who would have been normally preparing for performance on stage, have shifted gears to the virtual world of theatrical experience. Let's check out Digital Clock. Clockwork is probably the most exciting project that we have going on this summer. Uh, most of the projects involve the students working within their own departments, but Clockwork, we actually pair them with students from other departments. Uh, we give them an assignment uh, and pretty much free, complete artistic license. And uh, that's really resulted in some pretty exciting stuff. Good morning. You can catch weekly episodes of Digital Clock programming on Facebook, their website, collegelightoperacompany.com, and right here on FCTV Channel 13. We look forward to more updates from the College Light Opera Company in future episodes of Falmouth in Focus. The spread of COVID-19 caused the postponement and eventually the cancellation of the Falmouth High School in-person graduation ceremony for the class of 2020 this summer. Fortunately, we were still able to celebrate the graduates' accomplishments through a virtual event. So, seniors, class of 2020, welcome to the day you thought would never happen. It's been more than four months since you walked away from Falmouth High School in March, 133 days to be exact, and since then, every day has been filled with uncertainty and worry. Every day, the fear of what will be next on the horizon as we watch a world, our world, spinning like a wild tornado but not today. Today is your day, the day you have all waited for, for the past 12 years. We've endured tough political elections without the ability to vote and now the ability to vote, climate change and the differing opinions on it, weather storms, hurricanes, a global pandemic known as COVID-19, which I'm sure we all thought was just gonna be a free two week, no school moment that turned into months. And then the senseless killings and violence against black people like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and Tamir Rice being forced into our sight in a way that made it impos impossible for us to look away. I know it may not seem like we really completed senior year, but I can assure you our diplomas are proof that we are graduates. I guess it is true what they say, high school goes by in a flash. And just like you, a lot of you, 
I too certainly didn't feel like those stressful classes and long nights on weekends were short at first. Now I would do anything to just go back and get a glimpse at what they were like. Close your eyes. Think about your friends. Think about all of us. Reminisce about everything we have experienced together. The shoulders we have cried on in our moments of need, the laughter we have shared in our moments of bliss, the smiles we have shared in our moments of triumph. Please, don't worry so much. Tonight, cast your eyes on the beautiful night sky and look at the stars. Look at Alpha Centauri. Look and see a light that shined four years ago, before our first day of high school. As we sit here today in our unorthodox form of a graduation ceremony, it is important to acknowledge the support this class has gotten over our high school career. It is pretty redundant to say our school year did not end up the way anyone had anticipated. At times, it may seem easiest to combat our complicated feelings on our situation with jokes and memes about the coronavirus, but it is undeniable that we were let down. However, the amount of support from the FHS staff in the town of Falmouth was amazing. The adults in our community sympathized with our feelings of disappointment and tried their best to make the distasteful end of our high school experience better in any way they could. You did not give up. You did not give in. You rose to the challenge. And you will thrive in life, not in spite of these uncertain times, but because of them. Go forth, stay brave, and be the proud clipper you are. We are so very proud of you. On behalf of the school committee and all of us that make up the Falmouth Public Schools, I would like to congratulate each of you and wish you the very best always. Congratulations to this year's graduating class. Thanks to Ryan Weber for that video. Stay tuned to FCTV to remain connected to your local community as we continue to bring you the latest developments and news through our local coverage of the coronavirus phased reopening plan. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, our website, and stay tuned to channels 13, 14, and 15. And FCTV wants to remind you that television can be as easy as hitting record on your smartphone. We'd like to invite all Falmouth residents and visitors to share their slice of life with us. Email us your photos and videos, or upload them to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the hashtag MyFalmouth or Falmouth in Focus to be featured on the show thanks to our most recent contributors. We leave you now with the sights and sounds from Falmouth Academy's commencement ceremony. Thank you for watching Falmouth in Focus. We'll see you next time.